Today, we're going to look at the Surface Tracker in DaVinci Resolve. It's pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, it tracks surfaces. And then if you wanted to maybe, for example, this shirt, if you wanted to put a new logo on here, and even if this wrinkles or the person turns a little bit, you can still composite your logo over what you have on the t-shirt. But it's not just used for things such as clothing. Today, I'm going to show you how we're going to track people's faces and what we can do to composite things over that. There are other tracking options within DaVinci Resolve, such as planar tracking, which will track a flat surface like the wall behind me, or 3D tracking where it will track the 3D scene, and this way you can put objects within the scene. But the surface tracker is nice because it will actually move with your subject. We're actually only covering a small portion of it here in this video, so if you're interested in seeing a more in-depth tutorial about this, let me know and subscribe to the channel. But for right now, let's take a look. The first thing that we want to do is search for the surface tracker in our effects library. We can drag it into our node window and make sure that it's connected to our other nodes. Now I'll try to locate a frame that shows the woman on the right's face straight on. The first option in the effect is called Bounds. This is going to be the area that we want to track and whatever we want to composite into our footage will be located in. So since we are trying to track faces in this video, I will click around the outside of her face, adding more points. The next button in the effect is called Mesh. Resolve triangulates lines to match what it sees as the surface of the item or the person. You'll notice that the lines meet right over her pupils and most of the other features on her face. From there, the next button is Track. Because we aren't at the beginning or ending of the clip, we will use this icon to track the footage back and forth. Of course, if needed, there are options to track back one frame or only backwards, and the same with tracking only forwards from that point. As you'll notice in the keyframe window at the bottom, Resolve has created a number of keyframes which reflect what we just did with the track on the surface tracker effect. You can see that it did a great job of sticking to the features that it is tracking on her face. However, you may notice a point off to the right that loses its location. Near the beginning of the clip, it starts off as a straight line through a few points, but then one of them slides and it creates this larger angle between the points. In the effect, there's an option called Mesh Rigidity, it starts off as 0.5, but what I can do is change it to 1, which makes it more rigid. Let's track this backwards and forward again. Now if I scrub through the footage and we look at that area again, you'll notice that it still continues to follow the same features, but the points of the mesh will be less influenced by whatever it's seeing in the bounds. So let's look at this footage and we will do the same thing. First thing we need to do is draw a bounding area around our subject's face. Once that's created, we can click on Mesh and see what Resolve determines is the surface of the face in order to create that mesh. It does mostly a good job as it did with the last footage, but if I scroll through the footage, you can see that our subject smiles. We are going to composite a painted face over our subject, and with the way that we have this set up now, all it will do was warp that composited asset. It won't ever show us his teeth. If we click on Bounds, we can actually create a part of the Bounds to ignore when making the mesh, and that's called a hole. There's a button label this hole, and if we click on that, we can now click around his mouth over our footage. We could of course do the same thing with his eyes, but just for the purposes of demonstration, we'll stay with just the mouth and click on mesh. If we want a more precise track, we can just add more lines. Under the mesh window on the effect, we can adjust the number there under the point number lines option. On the track window, we can leave everything at the default, and because we're not on the first and last frame, we can choose the option for tracking back and forth. Now, just for an example, I'm going to drag in a PNG file with transparency into our node area. By doing that, it will set the image as a matte. If I click on the highlight option, then that node, this is what we see. In order to composite this over our footage, we take the green output of that node and connect it up to the green connector of the surface tracker node. We can now see the DaVinci logo on our subject's face. From there, we take the top blue connector and connect it to the bottom one of our surface tracker node, and it removes everything except what was in the white area of the mat that I showed you. The other blue connectors are just different ways of compositing that image over our footage, and what I'll do now is connect and disconnect the lines from the different blue points on the mat to the effects node. We can finally head over to the last window on the surface tracker effect called result. The option for interaction displays will show the bounds and the mesh. What I will do here is just choose the hide option so we're not distracted by the bounds right now. 
You also have the option to adjust the opacity in the composite node, such as multiply or screen, or whichever makes sense for whatever you're compositing over your footage. The overlay placement section is where we are going to do most of our work. One of the choices that you have is an interactive canvas. Instead of adjusting parameter screw settings, you can adjust them in the window. First thing that you want to do is click the reference button because that is a frame you need to do it on, which is why it's important to choose an appropriate frame to start on. Because I chose hide, we can't see it, so I'll choose the option to show. And now I can grab the points in the window and start adjusting our resolve logo however I see fit. Personally, I like to use the sliders. When switching between the options, just note that it resets its position. I can now come in and make adjustments to things like zoom and the X and the Y positions, and I can adjust those parameters only restricted by the area we designated by the bounds that we created. Because we're compositing this over a mesh, if I adjust the location, we can see that the mesh is following the surface of his face and adjusting itself accordingly. We also have the option for pitch and yaw, which is just our image in the way that you can see in the footage window. If we don't need the aspect to stay the same as the original, we can also adjust the width and height separately. I've moved the location of the image, and you may notice that the hole we created doesn't seem to cover his mouth entirely. If I head to the top of the effect and click on mesh, we can see what is happening. What we can do is come into the footage and move one of the points, and that will adjust the keyframe accordingly. Of course, we would have to do this for each keyframe, and that may make it tedious. So now I will head back to the tracking section of our effect, and underneath our tracking options, there are options to remove tracking data. I'll click on the one that removes all the tracking data from before that particular frame, and it will disappear from the keyframe window as expected, and then we can just track backwards. Now if we scrub the rough footage, it outlines his mouth a little bit better. We can also hold control and draw a line in our viewer, selecting some points, and then we can manipulate them however we want, including rotating, scaling, and stretching. I can also select multiple points, click somewhere in the middle, and then drag those points out or in as needed. Now let's connect up our mat as we did in the other example, and let's head to result and make some adjustments there. Once we have it in place, there are additional options up top to soften the transition and expand or contract the mat. I'll make one or two other adjustments and you'll see as I script the footage that when he smiles, the image that we composited over his face adjusts with his face. Let's say that we want to change the color of the face paint. If we attempt to make any changes using the curves, for example, and we have the mat selected, nothing will happen. What we have to do is route the mat into another node first. We can connect them up similarly to the way that we did with the effect. If I choose highlight and select our new node, we can see exactly what we are compositing over our footage. Then we can connect the green output to the second green output, and then the blue at the bottom to the other blue at the bottom. Now with that particular node selected, we can make any adjustments that we want. One last thing I want to mention I think works nicely with the face paint is changing the composite mode to hard light. In this new footage, I've tracked the man's face that is turned to the side. If we connect up our node, the image is way too large for the bounding area we created. Let's head over to the results section of our effect. And once again, as you saw in the other example, when I start moving it around, you'll notice it follows the contours of his face. Another thing we can do to make this seem more realistic is change the opacity on the compositing section of the effect. If we scrub through the footage, it sticks nicely to the side of his face. I did notice, however, that the image was slipping a little bit. So what we can do to fix that is to adjust the amount of tracking points, and then on the next screen, we are going to change it from faster to better, which I personally notice is an accurate term for this effect. So I always suggest that you use that.
I disconnected our mat while we did that, so now I'll reconnect it, and then we can move the image again to get it back in the place that we want it. And as I play through the footage, you can see that it rotates with this face and stays connected to it. One last note I'd like to make is that you have to remember what this effect is for. Let's connect up a new image and use it as if it were a mask he had on his face. As he turns to the side, the mask follows, but it isn't wrapping around the other side of his face. Remember, this isn't a 3D scene, so while the mask appears to turn with his face, what's really happening is that all the points on the left-hand side are getting pushed together. For things like this, I wouldn't use this particular effect. When disconnecting the image and looking at the mesh, it becomes a lot more obvious. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I'm probably going to do a second video on this, especially if you're interested, so let me know in the comment section below. And that's because there's a lot of different scenarios which we can use with this effect. Thanks for watching. If you don't want to miss any of those upcoming videos, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.